Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. First of all, how many people here know what an endemic species is? Please raise your hand. How many don't? What a smart crowd. This must be this is a great crowd. So I'm going to tell you a little bit what endemic species, just a main definition, but it's a relative term because you could have a fish that lives in a cave in Kentucky be an endemic species, or a species of kangaroo in Australia on a continent be an endemic species. But the most uh, specific term that's used generally around the world is in a nation's border, within a nation. So an example would be the mountain gorilla, which uh, numbers just over a thousand animals, but it's not an endemic because it's found in three countries, Rwanda, Uganda, Democratic Republic of the Congo, but its close relative, the Grower's gorilla, which numbers over 3,000, is an endemic species. And you see the range map, and this is exactly why. It's only found in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but the mountain gorilla is found in three countries here. So it's really not the population, the endangerment, it's in the borders of the, where the country is found. Lions, for instance, are a non-endemic species. They're found in many countries. Elephants are found in many countries. They wouldn't be considered endemic. So talking about endemic species, the Okapi fits the definition. You see its range only in Democratic Republic of the Congo. But the most important thing about endemics, and the other people will tell you, is the challenges they only allow within the borders. You have to deal with the civic, social, economic, and political environment of that country at all costs. If things get too hot for you, you can't leave. You can't go to another country and work on Okapi or Ethiopian wolves or cotton-top tamarinds. You have to stay there. So you learn to be resilient, you learn to be tough, and you just go with the flow because you have to stay within the borders of that country and the ups and downs of that society and that government. So the Okapi is one of those. The Democratic Republic is really a remarkable country for endemics. There's 446 endemic species. The bonobo, the Congo peafowl, the only pheasant on the African continent. This is the fish and genet. I've seen this animal once. It lives in the rivers and streams of Congo and catches fish. It's, the, it's more mammal species in the Congo than any other place in Africa. There's lots of lizards, lots of amphibians, insects and plants, there are so many. But the, the point is, in really noteworthy endemics like okapi and the other species we're talking about today, they're usually endangered. They're focal points for protecting biodiversity. They're national or regional emblems, and acts as flagship species for immense biological value in certain areas. So the okapi fits all of these, but the okapi even adds on top of that the mystery of how it came to be discovered in Western science. This is a set of leggings that came into the hands of Harry Johnson, the governor of Uganda in 1900 from the Congo. This was came, and so together he put together this sketch and went to the, uh, the Museum of Natural History in London and the okapi was described in, in 1901. The okapi was protected in 1933 by the Belgian government. It was the last large mammal discovered in Africa and was the first species protected in Africa. So it's a unique form that drew a lot of attention from the Western world. If you see during the various government uh, entities that ruled the Congo, they all featured on the stamps and their currency. And this is a recent uh, departure tax uh, receipt I got in Bunia in Congo. Got an okapi there, and of course, they got an okapi stamp. So okapi are quite prevalent and known by everybody in the Congo and used uh, to bolster their national identity. Most importantly, the okapi is a symbol of the Institute in Congo for the Conservation of Nature. That's the entity responsible for the government of protection of the protected areas and all the animals. What's even funny is the rank is an okapi head. This would be a bar, you got an okapi, and I think a little strange to have okapi heads, but the okapi heads, whether you're a, a lieutenant or a captain, so the guard, so it's very, uh, very unusual. So the, the Congo has five World Heritage Sites, uh, Virunga, Garamba, Kizibiega, Salonga, they're named after places, but the okapi wildlife reserve, 14,000 uh, something square kilometers here, is uh, named after an animal. It's really unusual to have an area named after an animal. So this is the Okapi Wildlife Reserve, and it's where uh, we work and where uh, the largest population of Okapi exists in Congo. So our project is really centered around using the Okapi as the flagship species to protect the forest, because in that forest there's lots of chimpanzees, elephants, bongo, red forest hog, the Okapi, and the Mbuti pygmy live in this forest. So our project for 32 years is centered around protecting the forests that Okapi live in. Our project revolves around supporting the ICCN rangers who patrol the forest, picking up snares and looking for uh, arresting people involved in legal activities. Okapi are occasionally caught in snares, so removing snares is an important component of the protection work. 
the, the reserve is a reserve where people are allowed to use certain resources. There's about 50,000 people living in and around this reserve. So doing, doing, uh, dealing with the human impact and the human use of the resources is critical to our project. The roads are pretty really atrocious. Our education team has to travel these roads all the time to get to different villages you see all around the reserve. And our goal is to reach every school kid at least twice a year, about 37,000 school kids in the general area around the reserve. And we work with the kids because this is really the first people are trying to reach. They know a copy, they know what a copy is. We just have to encourage them to make it a priority in how they make decisions in the future. Another part of our program is agroforestry. We grow trees. Uh, reforest areas and to help farmers produce food. We have five tree nurseries around the reserve. And last year, we close, close to 70,000 trees were planted. And this year, we're, our target is even higher. But this is a very important component because the trees are really important okapi habitat. And where it's been degraded, we need to reforest it. Healthcare, and I was talking to several people today, is one of the big issues. This is a clinic. This is a WCN donor funded this hospital wing we just put on the clinic. We just finished it. We were there for the grand opening and the head of ICCN of all the whole country was there for the grand opening. Uh, we have a little special building in the back for the Mbuti pygmies. And I've always sworn I'm never standing up to take a picture with a pygmy again, so I always sit down. <laughs> and my wife was real funny, said, you look like Gulliver. So I don't know. <laughs> but this building was built for the pygmies because they could have a fire inside. Whenever they get sick, they have to go inside. If they go inside, they have to have a fire, and the whole family comes. So these rooms are specially built to take fires so the pygmies can come if they're sick and be treated. They won't go into the regular rooms we got with beds that crank up and it's real clean and sterile. They won't go in those rooms. This is the only place they want to go. And we really care about uh, honoring the culture and traditions of the indigenous people. And this is some, how, how we do that for them. Uh, Lucas Mears is here. Our program will also be talking about our work with the women's group in the next session upstairs. So if you want to hear more about our work with women, which is very important, Lucas is going to go that, uh, into that in detail in a few minutes upstairs. But in the Congo, there's not one kid over two years old or one person doesn't know what Okapi is. Okapi are everywhere. This, group, this truck was refueling my plane in Bunya a couple weeks ago, pulls up the Okapi group. Okapi water is available. Okapi cigarettes. Okapi logistics. You see Okapi everywhere, so it's not, people don't say, oh, what's an Okapi like to do in America? What's an Okapi? I never saw an Okapi. They know what it is. But the most important use of the Okapi are two uh, things that are for, so important. Radio Okapi is the number one news source in Congo. It is radio, it is media, it's print, it's internet. That's the number one news source. It's quoted around the world, Radio Okapi. ICCCN is the government agency responsible for all wildlife and protected areas. Their symbol is an okapi, but important is the leaf. Not just the okapi, the leaf stands for the forest, which the okapi needs. But in America, for some reason, people use okapi. And, and I've had contact with these people, and they don't even know what an okapi is. They, we just like the name. We like the logo we can create, a great logo, you know? If you re research okapi, there's a lots of businesses. <laughs> And I've gotten, I've uh, contacted most of these, and I've gotten a $500 donation total out of all of them for using the animal name. So I think if you're going to use an animal's name, you should at least contribute to its conservation. That's my personal view, but a lot of people don't. <laughs> but what we need to, need to know is make the world known the Okapi, because the Okapi is a symbol of all of the most biodiverse country in Africa, the highest density of primates in Africa. This is our camera trap team. Uh, in uh, Congo, and we started our um, camera trap a couple years ago, and you've seen most of these pictures, but the idea is this is the first photos of Okapi in their habitat, doing what they do. We have an Okapi baby, we have this Okapi eating, so now we can share the world. This is how these animals live. Now imagine you'll never see one of these in a while, so, it's very, so this is the way we make this known. Recently, because of security issues, we could go into some improvements in security issues, we could go into some areas of the Congo. This is an Edo, which is a bai in some of the other countries. It's an opening in the forest, a natural opening in the forest. And we just put some camera traps. We finally, it's a five-day walk into the forest. And it, there's the elephants, forest elephants there. And this is a remarkable footage of an okapi in the open. And there's, there's uh, minerals in the soil here, clay and different minerals. So the animals come here to get this mineral. And even the okapi come. And to see an okapi out in the opening, and this has tourism potential in the future. There's ways we could probably use this in the future for people to see the animals. And this is uh, the remarkable forest buffalo. The red, beautiful red with huge fringed ears. This is the buffalo that lives in the forest along with the okapi. 
and it's a you know, phenomenal animal, but it's very difficult to see. And then even the elephants are coming. And what I was telling people that the elephants weren't nervous. If your elephants are being uh, poached and hunted, they're very nervous when they get into the open. These elephants were in the, relaxing, they're getting to the water hole, they play in the mud. We have other videos of them doing different things with the babies. So this area, there's really no hunting or poaching going on. We're very, it's a very high uh, value place for wildlife. So we're very happy with getting some of this footage. But really our message uh, givers and our uh, ambassadors to all of you and most of the world is the Okapian zoos. We have a great relationship with zoos. That's where you can see an Okapi and really see them. This is at Disney's Animal Kingdom, one of our great partners. But this is 85% of the zoos that house Okapi contribute to Okapi conservation, which is great and a really remarkable for this partnership. More than that, they put Okapi front and center at institution, the Sacramento Zoo here. It, it does a great job with that. Just give them a shout out. They really promote Okapi. If we get a chance to want to see them, you should go over to the Sacramento Zoo. But also all these zoos around the world support our project. But one way we really do, do this is a few years ago, we created World Okapi Day on October 18th. And people ask me why we chose that day. Well, first of all, we wanted to have the Okapi and northern zoos be able to be out for people could see them. And second, there wasn't another animal day. There's an animal day every day of the year. We were lucky on October 18th. It was not an animal day. So we didn't, we didn't bump anybody. I didn't want to bump any or compete with anybody. So that was the best way to do it. So, but this program is celebrated in zoos in the United States, but mainly we celebrate this in the Congo. We just want to make this animal, who is their national animal, front and center in the kids' minds. So we have this day, we have t-shirts, there's a parade, all the taxi care, these are all the taxi drivers wear t-shirts. We have races, boys and girls races, and the winners get their school fees paid for a year, which they're really proud of. The teachers nominate the kids that can run because they're really trying hard. And then we have women's soccer games, we have this big soccer game, there's a big parade. Last year we reached about 15,000 people, and this year we hope to reach about 20,000 people on this day around the reserve and really get them the value of copy. And they really do. They have backpacks that will copy. They have, they have the shirts. So they really value it. And it's here it's being celebrated in Japan and uh, Columbus Zoo. I think this in Dallas and Columbus Zoo celebrate. But mainly it's the, it's the, the kids and the people in Congo that benefit because the, the Okapi, the day is all about Okapi. You can't help but get the message. Our educators are out there mixing and talking with people, so it's very important. This day is, uh, we, Lucas has done a great job organized, but we have a great education team. Right now, they're going to, because it's next Friday, right, Lucas, Friday? Yeah. Next Friday is the 18th, so they will be going out now, bringing all the supplies. We had over 1,000 T-shirts made in Kampala, in Uganda. Had to bring them in. We have our backpacks. We have everything else. And the money, for, and we have a lot of zoos and other institutions sponsoring each village. So the money is paid for to give this. So it's really a real special day. Now, our goal here is in the future that these people will want the Okapi to exist. And if they want the Okapi to exist, elephants will exist, chimpanzees will exist, bongo will exist, forest hogs, millions of species of insects will exist because Okapi require an intact functioning tropical forest that's not under duress to survive. If they're surviving, so many things are surviving. That's the goal of us. We use this flag to be, this is the national animal of the people of the Congo. And this says, protect the Okapi, the pride of DRC. This is, we want this. And if you go into Kinshasa, any place, they all know, understand this and uh, they support our promotion of this animal. So at the end of the day, we want every kid to know what an Okapi is and to value, because everything else on this animal poster lives with Okapi. And then we want, this is a ranger who did this painting of the Okapi here. We want every adult to say there is some value in having this animal here. And uh, we are a small team, but we're very, we're very active and very effective in the Congo. And your support makes uh, all of our work possible. And I want to thank you all for uh, supporting us and coming out and hearing about this. But endemic species are important to realize that you can create a national fervor for a species that translates into conservation across a large landscape that's so important. And other speakers will do the same thing. And that's it. But the challenge is, and we work with these, if things get really tough, you really have to stick it out. You really have to have guile because there's no other country or other place you can go if you really care about Okapi. And our team really does care. And I thank you for caring.